our, our presentation is going to be about um, in, induction. So I'm Elizabeth and this is Sebastian. So now we're going to tell you about what we did. Yeah, the first thing we have here is the introduction to induction. Um, magnetism and electricity are very closely linked. Earth state showed that magnetic fields could be generated by an electric current. And Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction describes the opposite process by which a magnetic field can generate a current in a conductor. Specifically, Faraday discovered that a changing magnetic field generates a current in a conductor. Faraday's law, but do you not need a formula there? Faraday's law. Oh, yeah, I think yeah, I think there was there was a formula there before. There's something about like Faraday. delta phi on delta t or something. Yeah, it's some some some, like some change with respect to time. But maybe we just go on and yeah, can do yeah, that. let's go on. Yeah, so so so. Continuing our introduction to induction, Lenz's law expands Faraday's law to, oh no, the equations aren't here. I think it was something like minus, it had a minus there, that was what made it Lenz's law. And I think it was like N Is and then that delta phi on delta T thing. I think that's what it's yeah, it. I think the minus is something is important. Yeah, but yeah. we we discuss that later. Yeah, since the strength of the electromotive force is dependent on the speed of the change in flux and the strength of the flux, these laws are the basis for all generators as well as transformers and induction braking. So here we've got a nice little diagram, and you can see the magnet going in and out of the solenoid, which we did a bit in our experiment. Your turn now. And we continue with the um, introduction to induction and transformers, what we've done as well, use alternating current and induction to change the current and voltage of electricity. And you can, okay. Uh, transformers are used in electricity transmission to reduce power loss by reducing the current as well as to convert voltages to usable levels for home appliances. In an ideal transformer, no energy is lost in transforming the voltage. However, eddy currents can be produced in the core of the transformer, which produce heat and cause energy loss. And you can see that, so here you see there is a, is a flux and you have the primary and secondary coil here and then that sort of generates then, you know, the different voltages. But uh, I think Liz will go into more detail for that. Yes, I, I think that the equation which got left off there was like about the number of turns of these two and the relationship between that and the voltage. So, so what we actually did was we had a basic, a standard and an advanced experiment and in our basic experiment, we've got that as the magnet falls through the pipes, it induces a current in the pipe that creates a magnetic field which opposes the motion of the magnet. This causes the magnet to slow down, demonstrating the process of electromagnetic braking and confirming Lenz's law. In the standard experiment, the material that makes up the core of the transformer affects the eddy currents produced in the core and therefore the amount of energy lost is heat. We measured the efficiency of the transformer for different cores and setups. And then we did an advanced experiment. We looked at Faraday's law and explored how the speed of the change of flux impacted on the EMF induced and the magnetic field produced as a result, confirming Faraday's law. So first we now talk uh, about the basic experiment, which is inductive braking, and we've got a nice little diagram over there where you can see what we did. We have a pipe that is secured vertically, and then we drop magnets from rest that they fall down the pipe, and then we take, um, the, we measure the time it takes a magnet to exit, measure that on film, and then we repeat it that four times for each um, sort of uh, different pipes that we have and compared the three. 
And then our standard goal was with the transfer efficiency in this, this transformer here. So we connected the AC power supply. We had 400 turn coil in a 2 to 1 ratio. The input and output voltages got recorded and we repeated three times for the ratios 2 to 1, 1 to 1, 1 to 2. For, and we, we put different cores into our transformer and saw what happened with the different cores to see if that material had a bit of an effect. I will quickly talk about um, our extension with it um, finding the B field. And we used, as you can see over there in this nice diagram, um, a perspex tube that was secured with a coil around the top. And we dropped magnets through the tube five times. And then we repeated that for different heights. And then from the time and the potential that we measured, we could then calculate the magnetic field strength of the magnet that was falling through the tube. So this shows our results from that first experiment where we have the, the different materials and we have all the times that it takes. And one of the uncertainties was human error because I think we didn't do it so great. And and you can see our averages up there and our errors. And, and it was faster for the, for the plastic tube, but it went a lot more slowly in the solid metal tube. So we concluded from that that there was some breaking in the solid metal, and we think that that's due to the eddy currents and things. So we think that a good improvement would be to use an optical sensor to do this experiment. Yeah, and then um, this is now graphing what we uh, got for the second part for the uh, standard experiment where we've got the voltage versus the efficiency. The eff 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 efficiency. And we've got a uh, on. We've got the efficiency around about, you can see for when you have a low voltage, the efficiency sort of is fairly low as well. And then when the voltage gets higher, the efficiency sort of stays constant for the closed um, transformer. And then we've got the different cores with the linear laminated one and the non-linear laminated one. Then you could see that they sort of all show the same trend. And yeah, from that we basically concluded, as you can see here, that the efficiency for a closed transformer is the highest, and then somehow the core might have an effect as well. And as you can see, if you don't have a core at all, the efficiency basically stays really, really low. And um, yeah, we've calculated the error to be 7.075% on all of the values that we've got in this diagram. Yep. So now, now this shows with our, our final experiment where we were dropping the magnets from the different heights and measuring the induced voltage. So the top one shows like the induced voltage from the different drop heights and it kind of looks a bit linear but, but I, I think it was meant to be a, a parabola or maybe, it, no, is it linear or a parabola? Yeah, that should sort of, should that not depend on the speed somehow? Yeah, and, yeah, and so, the speed, I mean, so how speed does the speed depend on the, oh well, this is what it yeah. looked like, this was what our results showed us, and from that we could, we could calculate different magnetic field strengths with different drop heights, so you can see that magnets get stronger, well no, they get weaker as you drop them from a higher, uh, from a, yeah, higher height so that the height you drop the magnet from affects how strong the field coming out of it is. Okay, I, I think we've, is I it? think that's I think everything. Is that, oh. oops. Oh, no, sorry, that's not everything, okay. So, um, yeah, now, now we come to the, yeah, so summarize basically what we did in our experiment. We, we have here, so in the basic experiment, what we did first, what we explained there, you know, 
um, we've got the hypothesis was supported and um, the longest time it took the magnet to fall down was in the solid aluminum pipe and that was then followed by the split aluminum pipe and basically dropping the magnet through the PVC was the fastest and we concluded from that 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 is due to the eddy currents that are induced sort of in the metal and the uncertainty, I mean the biggest error was basically the uncertainty in the timing and it was also probably due to the to the friction and the collision of the magnet with the tube and we could extend on that by using basically different magnets or different materials with different thicknesses and shapes and yeah, this is our conclusion for the basic one. So for the standard one, our hypothesis was supported. It's most efficient with closed laminated O core and the efficiencies were 89% plus or minus 5%. The largest uncertainty due to power supply and lack of AC ammeter. Extension would be to test on the different frequencies. And then in our advanced experiment, what we did in the, in the last part, um, that was basically, again, the hypothesis we had was supported and the niodymium um, magnet um, field was calculated to be 0.47 Tesla and that was roughly equal to the expected range for that sort of magnet and the largest source of uncertainty was the use of a short coil and the magnet was fairly large compared to the coil and the error was also due to a low sampling rate of the logger pro and an extension here would probably be to do it with a new magnetic field sensor so that we can accurately measure the magnet's true B field and then basically compare that to what we measured during our experiment. I think I think we have finished now. Yes, yeah. Are there yeah, that's any, the end. Questions? any questions? Okay, thank you guys.